All right, welcome back everyone. Um, in today's episode, we are going to be doing quite a few things. Let me just pop up my reference and I can show you. So first thing is our HP bar is now animated as you can see on the top right. It's a little hard to see, but it does slowly go back instead of just like open. And now we also can attack and boom, we can damage our thing and it shows us how much damage we did, which is really awesome. So um, let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to do Let's open everything we need. So we need our game. Um, let's close all this and then open our script again. Go to our player. Let's open that. We're going to open our skelly. We're going to open that. And then we're also going to make a new node. Um, no, actually, let's do our let's do our our HP first. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure you have the tween in here. And in there, um, let me just pull out my reference. In here, we're going to create a new variable called current health. I, I guess I forgot to delete that actually. Um, so this variable, what it's going to do is it's going to hold our current health value. And every time our value changes, it's going to check if it changes, right? So if we have minus five, for example, or, or 50 health, and then we have 45 all of a sudden, it's going to save that value. So we know that we just changed our value. So what we're gonna do is, we want to update it usually, right? So current health equals game dot player HP. But before we update it, we want to see if it changed. So if it did change, we'll, we'll do um, in order to check it changed, we do current health not equals game dot player HP. And so this is going to check if our HP changed. If it did, what we'll do is we're going to get our tween, right? Yeah. And then we're going to use a function called interpolate. Uh, property is down there. And this guy calls a lot of different functions. You can check out the document to see exactly what it does. But the first one is going to, we're going to see what are we going to change? What are we going to animate exactly, right? So the first one is get node. And we're going to animate our, yeah, our HP, um, which is going to be this guy, the progress bar. So we want to animate the progress bar. So how are we going to animate the progress bar? Or what exactly in this progress bar are we going to animate? Well, we're going to animate the value, which is not capitalized, so I don't want to error. So the next thing I want to do is which two values are we going to animate from to what to what from what to what, right? So we're going to use current health. So we're going to use our current health, which is higher than our now health, or now health. Um, we're going to animate our current health to the current health the real current health, which is our uh, game dot player HP. And then how long are we going to take to animate this? I'm going to do 0 0.5 seconds. I want it to be relatively quick because if it's not, then it might take a while. And then we're just going to start it. I'm going to do some dot start. And I think that should be it. Um, because in here, we do not have anything active. We're not going to change anything here. So that's it. And now when I play and I get hit, it animates. Awesome. So that's it for the progress bar. So this is a very simple idea of tween. Tween can be very complicated. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. It's very fun. Um, and we're actually going to use this to create our damage. So the next thing I want to do is close this. We no longer need to edit that and create a new scene. And in the scene, we're going to make a label. And then we're going to add a tween to it. And we're going to take this label, actually, and we're going to move it up here. We're going to write in some numbers. I'm going to theme override. Let's bring out our font that we want. I'm going to use the pixel bold as always. We're going to go to font, pop that in, go to make unique. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to go to extra, not extra spacing, settings. I'm going to actually make it half as big as it actually is. I'm going to make the outline size one and I'm going to make it black. And then that is it. Yeah. You can kind of make it so that they're closer together, which would actually kind of be cool, but uh, we'll leave it like this. And then we're going to save this. We're going to name it hit, H-I-T. I'm going to put it in the global. I'm going to give it a script. I'm going to rename it before I give it a script. And then give it a script, H-I-T, put it in there. And in this guy, what we're going to do is we're going to have a few different variables. Um, let me double check that I've changed all these settings that I need. Um, let me... Let's actually center it, and we're going to change it up here. 
Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll make the V line, nope, the this guy left, and then the V line center. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll leave it like this. Awesome. And then in our script, we're going to delete all this. And we're going to have two different variables. The first one is going to be travel. Next one is going to be duration. The next one is going to be spread. The next one is going to be crit. This is kind of an extra thing. The crit you can kind of ignore if you don't want to do it, but um, we'll, we'll do crit for now. Um, okay, so travel is going to be a vector two. That is going to be a zero and minus 50. So the travel is going to be how, where are we going to travel? So we want to go from here to up. So we're going to travel upwards. So once I hit something, it's going to go up essentially. And duration, we'll set it to one. Spread will be pi. You can do pi um, minus, divided by two if you want, uh, but it doesn't really matter. And then crit will make it to false for now. And we might actually not do crit at all, but I'll kind of add it in for now anyways. All right, so now we're going to make a value called show uh, value. And we're going to pass through value. That one to the outside. And now what we're going to do is take our um, text, and we're going to make it equal to the value. Then we're also going to do rectangle um, pivot. Oh, rect pivot offset is going to be equal to the rect size divided by two. Or right, we'll do four. That's what I did in my preference. And then we're going to make a new variable inside of here. We're going to call, call it movement travel dot located random range. So we're going to randomize it a little bit and we're going to get it between minus spread divided by two and spread divided by two. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get a random um, uh, range between pi and minus pi, which is divided by two. And we're going to rotate it so that way we can kind of get random directions that we go upward. So it's not always going in one direction, essentially, right? So our travel is, is this, but with this, by changing it like that, we can kind of randomize it to give it different directions or angles, essentially. So this involved a little bit of math, and I kind of skipped over it, but feel free to kind of pause and think about it. So, all right, next thing I want to do is get node dot queen. And then we're going to, again, use the interpolated property. And we're going to do it on our cell. And we're going, to, we're going to animate the rectangle position. So let me actually just copy paste this, just in case I misspell it. And I would suggest you actually spell this right well, otherwise it'll error. And then in this rectangle position, what are we going to change? Well, the rectangle position. Um, and then we're going to take we're going to go from our rectangle position all the way to rectangle position plus our travel, oh no, sorry, our movement, which is the new variable we just made. And then we're going to take duration, which is one, uh, 0.5, right? No, it's just one actually. So this way we can kind of change it easily. And then in our, in our interpolate property, there's actually two more things we can do. Um, we can take tween, as you can see, it kind of fills it out automatically. But you can't see it, so we'll type it out. Between dot trans linear. Will it pop it up for me? No, it won't. Trans linear. Right? Oh, I spelled this wrong. That's why it's not all caps. It's tween like that. So there we go. Trans linear. And then tween dot uh, ease in out. All right. And then we're also going to, we're going to get our tween and start. So we're going to take this and we're going to do dot start. And then um, we're going to, after we start, we're going to yield until the tween is completed. And then we're going to queue free. So once, so again, yield, what yield does is it's, it's similar to break. So if you know what break is, it's break. It's very similar to just doing this, I think. Oh. No, Godot doesn't have that. But if you do in other programs, sometimes if you click the code, it'll break. You can also just type in break, um, but you can only do it in a loop. But yield, what yield does is it 
it's similar to a break, but it doesn't break the code. It doesn't stop. It yields, it stops, it, it pauses the code until the condition is, is done. So we're going to pause until this tween tells us that the tween is done. And then we'll queue free, right? So we can also, yeah, we'll just pop this in so we keep consistent with how we're playing our code. And then, um, so this is going to animate the position. So we'll say animate position of label. Now what we want to do is we want to animate the fade out. So we want our, our thing to kind of fade out outwards, right? As we're going out. So what we'll do is we'll actually copy paste this. And then in here, we're going to change a few things. In here, what we're doing is we're actually going to modulate, modulate A, right? Because in our in our actual label, we can we can do this manually. So let's let's try to do it manually and then see how we can actually do this. So we go to modulate, go here, we go to A, and we can just modulate it. Right? There we go. That's how you modulate something. That's how you make something invisible. Right? So modulate slash A. You can kind of look this up and how double check that that's how you modulate it. Let me actually just copy paste it again. One more, just in case. And then we're going to go from 1.0 to 0. So I'm going to delete all that to 0. And then the duration will all the same, same thing. Tra uh, we'll do the duration and then translinear and trans in and out. And that should be it. Let me just double check. Yeah, that is it. So now we have our label that should animate pretty smoothly. So let's test it out. Let's go to our player. And what we'll do actually is we're going to globalize our damage. So we're going to erase that five and say game dot damage. And then we have to actually add the damage or we'll do, we'll rename it to player PNG. No, damage, no, damage like that. And I'll capitalize that. Let's go to our game. Let's add that. And we'll say the damage is equal to three. Oops, there we go. And then we'll go to back to our player. And then in here, what we'll do is the first thing we need to do is actually create our, our or preload our variable. So our hit thing. So I'm going to do variable hit um, equals preload. We're going to preload our hit. So I should be able to, nope, I can't just do that, I guess. Um, we have to go to our global. We drag in our hit. There it is. We preloaded our hit. And now what we're going to do is every time I hit something, I'm going to get, or I have to make it first. So variable dot hit equals hit dot instance. And then we're going to add it. Where are we going to add it? Well, you can add it to our player. But what I want to do is I want to add it to the the person that I just hit. So we'll do uh, get parent dot add child. And then nothing will happen because in our variable, this doesn't just happen the moment it's ready. We actually have to show, we have to call the function show value, right? So if we copy that, go back to our player, we say hit dot show value with game dot player damage. So now we just double check that's it. Do, 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 ah. String player damage. <laughs> we want to make sure that we pass a string through not a integer. All right, now let's try it. Let's see what happens. We can play. If I go to my zombie, errors, why is that? Add child, hit. I have to add the hit. I can't just add a child. I can't add nothing. All right, let's try it one more time. Awesome, there we go. And now we do three damage to it. And every time it pops up, and as you can see, it's kind of random. So it doesn't just go up in one direction all the, way, all the time. It's somewhat random and kind of pops the direction. It goes pew, 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 like that. <laughs> so that's for the regular stuff. I think we can, we can do um, crit if we want. So what we'll do is say if crit equals true, um, we can actually pass through another value called crit. And then we'll pass, we'll have to delete that. And then we go back to our player and then say uh, true. So now our crit is equal to true here. And if it's equal to true, what we'll do is, let me just go to my code. 
We're going to do the exact same thing as the position label, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it slightly bigger movement. So I'm going to just, no, sorry, we're not doing the position We're we're going to be editing the scale. So we're going to make this, the, the actual label bigger by editing the scale. And so we're going to get our scale and we want to make it two times bigger from, which should just be rectangle scale. Let me just double check. Yeah, that's right. Uh, from our, our regular rectangle scale. So we're going to go from one to two, or you can do like three or four or whatever you want. And then duration we'll do, we'll change that to 0 0.4. And then between trans back and between trans in, and that's it. And then we're also going to change our color. So you, we want it to change, we want to change it to red. So if you want to double check this, you can go here and modulate and then see what happens if you go here and then click, no, is it, or is it raw? Yeah, it's raw. So if you go here, zero, zero, what do you get? You get red. So uh, edit that, go back to default. So that's how we modulate that color by using the color one, zero, zero. Okay. And then that should be it, right? Yeah. So now if I play one more time, go here, I can look, hit it and it crits. So it's going to scale it from two to zero to one, right? So it's going to go, oh, you crit, good job. Um, so you can kind of play around with how to crit in your player. So you can check to see if it crits and then if it does, then do that, if not, whatever. Um, should we? No. Uh, I will let you figure out how to check for the crit chance on your own. But how can you do a crit chance on your own? I'm not going to do that in this series, I don't think, but um, you can kind of figure that out on your own. Um, I'm going to just ignore all these. And then what is this one? Eh, who cares? That doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, that is it. I think that, yeah, that is it for today's episode. Um, 17 minutes, not bad. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned how to use tween. Uh, this episode was actually very much just directed around using a tween. Um, so it's, it is, I, I didn't really explain this function because it has so many different things to put in and you can even just ignore these two, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do with it, but I would recommend you go to the Godot documentation and use that, um, in the future or. There are a lot of people online who just help you tween things and animate things. So you're more than welcome to use that as well. Um, but yeah, another way you could have done this, I suppose, is you could have used animation player, which could have worked actually, but I think tween is a bit better because it uses code. So yeah, tween can be replaced with animation player, I think in most cases, but I think tween is a bit better. So it's good to use both. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys understand what tween is. If you don't, again, you can just go to tween and it says smoothly animates and knows properties over time. But tween, again, it, it is very good. It's, it's just, it's literally animation player, but using code essentially. So if you guys learned anything, let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys next time.